The scalpel is the surgeon's trademark tool. Its short blade is razor sharp and designed to slice swiftly and cleanly. This little knife may seem like a simple instrument, but its incredible precision, along with the surgeon's steady hands, is key to a safe and accurate medical procedure. Scalpel handles are made from rods of stainless steel. The blades are made of either carbon steel or stainless steel. They're sterile and designed for one-time use only. The blade steel is extremely thin, less than two hundredths of an inch. It arrives at the scalpel factory in coiled strips. The first machine feeds the strips into a press. A die inside punches out unfinished blades called blanks. Blades will vary in size and contour, but they all have the same center slot for attaching the handle. When you flex a blank, it bends entirely out of shape. That's because the steel still needs to be tempered. The blanks pass through a furnace for about 30 seconds. The heat alters the molecular structure of the metal, hardening it. Now the blank has the flexibility a scalpel blade requires. Next, the blanks move through a punching tool that pops them from the strip and stacks them on a peg. A worker threads a metal ring through the slots to keep them together, then sends the whole set of blanks for surface polishing. This process will restore the metal's original sheen, which was dulled by the heat treatment. Next, workers visually inspect every blank, discarding any defective ones. They transfer the blanks from the ring to a metal rod, using a gauge to measure out the right number. From here, the rods are mounted onto grinding machines. Each one picks up a blank with a magnet, then places it in a holder. The holder runs the blank against a wheel coated with diamond particles. This powerful abrasive shapes and sharpens a cutting angle, transforming the blank into a blade. As the blades come off the grinder, they cling together because the magnet that fed them into the machine magnetized them. To cancel this effect, a demagnetizing machine passes an electromagnet behind the stacks of blades. <laughs> After a thorough washing in an ultrasonic cleaning tank, the blades move on to final inspection. Wearing protective rubber gear, workers carefully scrutinize the cutting edges, discarding any blade that's less than perfect. Each and every blade passes through two different inspectors. In the packaging department, a machine covers each blade with a brown paper strip that contains an anti-corrosion chemical. This provides extra protection against rust. A second machine slips each blade into a foil packet, then cuts the packets apart. Each packet bears the blade model number and tracking code. As the blades come off the packing machine, an inspector does one last quality check. Then he counts the blades and boxes them. Of course, it's critical that surgical blades be sterile. So the boxes go into a cobalt radiation chamber for about six hours. This obliterates any lingering contaminants. When the boxes exit the chamber, they're hospital ready. In the operating room, it's simply a matter of sliding the blade onto the protruding part of the handle, called the bayonet. Surgeons make the most of their dexterity by choosing a handle that best fits their hands, and best suits the procedure their hands will be performing. <laughs>